Weather is not directly responsible for making people sick, with infections, common cold and flu. But there are several mechanisms, with which cold temperature can weaken immune system functioning. Cold air inflames lungs and inhibits circulation, increasing the risk of respiratory conditions, such as asthma attacks, worsening of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and infection. Cold also induces vasoconstriction, which causes stress to the circulatory system, this prevents immune system cells, from reaching the mucous membrane. Nasal cavity and bronchi become less protected against viral and bacterial infections. During cold weathers, people spend more time indoors, and close contact is more common. In such conditions, when people are close to each other, viruses and infections spread more and easily. During winter months, many people get less sunlight. Reduced sun exposure causes decline in vitamin D2. Vitamin D deficiency affects immune system functioning against infectious agents. Decreases in both temperature and humidity over a three-day period increase the risk of rhinovirus infections. And rhinovirus is the major causative agent of common cold. In humans, exposed to environments colder than body temperature, heat flows from the body core toward the environment, primarily via dry heat loss mechanisms. So in cold weathers we lose heat from our body. In addition, wind increases convective heat loss from the body's surface, that's why windy weathers accelerates heat loosing process and weakens immune system. Thus providing the basis for the concept of wind chill. And now about wet hairs and rain. Water has a much higher thermal capacity than air. Convective heat transfer is greater, perhaps 70-fold, during immersion in water than in air of the same temperature. That's why wet hairs or wet clothes can increase heat loss and risk of infections. Cold spells are associated with increased mortality and respiratory and cardiovascular morbidity, and mortality and morbidity rates in countries with cold and temperate climates are higher in winter than in summer. Indoor temperature also important for health. Although, there is no demonstrable risk to human health, of healthy sedentary people, living in air temperature of between 18 and 24 degrees Celsius. Voluntary physical activity can increase metabolic heat production. However, the effect of exercise on thermal balance depends on a complex interaction among factors related to exercise intensity, environmental conditions, and mode of activity. While exercise increases metabolic heat production, it also facilitates heat loss from the body by increasing blood flow to the skin and active muscles. This flow enhances convective heat transfer from the central core to peripheral shell.